reduction in NIS contributions obviously it means that less persons will be on the payroll. Of course. Serious concerns that WASA's financial allocation hints at mass layoffs in 2024. With government offering back pay by December, dozens of PSA members are calling on the union to sign off on the 4% wage increase. UE principal jumps to support staff's call for higher wages. Coming up in sport, bronze for Dylan Carter at the Swimming World Cup second leg in Greece. From a hot spell and hazardous seas this weekend to a solar eclipse tomorrow, I'll have the details on everything happening on the ground and in the skies in tonight's weather forecast. There's a major concern tonight that a considerable portion of WASA's workforce will be sent home in 2024. And it all stems from a 50% cut to a particular line item for the Public Utilities Ministry. Minister Marvin Gonzalez was asked about it in the Parliament today but offered no clear answer. Akash Samru has more for us on this development, including what WASA's chairman has to say on the matter. The Standing Finance Committee of the Budget Debate allows for scrutiny of the more granular details of a ministry's allocation. It's during this process the MP for Princess Town brought the Parliament's attention to a $25.9 million decrease in 2024 for government's contribution to the NIS for WASA workers. MP Padarat asked Minister Marvin Gonzalez for an explanation. It is believed that in 2023, 2024, um, a lot of strides in and, and progress will be made in the restructuring of the Water and Sewage Authority. It's expected that we can have some cost savings here. We are not too sure. The Public Utilities Minister added that the government expects there'll be progress in 2024, Rewasa's restructuring, and he's awaiting further information. Not satisfied with that response, Padarat rephrased. If there's a reduction in NIS contributions, obviously it means that less persons will be on the payroll. Of course. And therefore the progress that you are speaking of that means that with a reduction of 25 million in NIS contributions means that employees at WASA are going home and this financial year coming. This Hello. is an admission that you are sending home WASA employees. And the minister responded, I cannot send home any WASA employee. But again, that did not satisfy the opposition MP. How many employees do you think this will impact in terms of the 25 million in reduction? I can't see. That would be quite speculative. MP Padarat would later tell CNC3 News that upon closer scrutiny, the 25 million cut in NIS payments represents a 50% slash in that allocation compared to 2023, raising concerns that half of WASA's workforce are in danger. Now, questions were then put to WASA's chairman, who told us that they'd have received a cabinet-approved roadmap for transforming the utility. Right now, they're in the process of recruiting top-level executives, and those execs will assist in deciding what human power will be needed going forward. Ravindra Nanga told CNC3 News that he anticipates by the end of the month, they will have those details to take to the union to start the consultation process, underscoring that no decision has yet been made. But Nanga did admit that WASA has been deemed as overstaffed and the utility has been given a mandate to cut costs. Asked if the transformation plan includes retrenchment, Nanga said that even though he has not seen the plan, he expects that it does include retrenchment, but they are open for the union to convince them otherwise. Akash Samaru, CNC3 News. But CNC3 News also spoke with President of the Public Services Association, Leroy Batiste, who said they are eagerly awaiting the finalized restructuring plan and to be engaged in this exercise. He said this current climate of uncertainty has WASA workers extremely concerned and worried about their futures. He said WASA should have involved them in the process for the sake of collaboration and transparency. And you can read more on this story in tomorrow's Guardian newspaper. Now, the Salcott has advised WASA of yet another planned shutdown of its Point Lisa's plant for a period of nine days from October 16th to October 24th to facilitate maintenance works. Now, WASA says this planned shutdown will have a significant impact on the authority's overall supply position in Trinidad since it provides 40 million gallons daily to WASA. Customers were being advised to establish a system of storage over the period and to reduce consumption. Now, in order to mitigate the effects of this supply shortfall, WASA will redistribute supply from the Karani and Navet water treatment plants, and there will be temporary supply schedules implemented, which will be published on WASA's social media pages. 
public servants are once again re-pressuring the PSA president, Leroy Batiste, to accept the government's 4% wage offer. We're taking to the streets today. Some workers demanded that he sign off and step down from office. K. Marie Fletcher was at the protest today and brings us this report. Dozens of dissatisfied public servants are demanding that PSA President Leroy Petit sign off on their 4% increase. Less than 24 hours ago, two government workers disrupted a PSA meeting on wage negotiations, which took place at the Port of Spain General Hospital. One of those workers then led several others in protest outside the PSA Port of Spain headquarters. But the members are also issuing another call for PSA President Leroy Batiste to be removed from office. The workers are upset that the PSA and the public service by extension has been excluded from the Honorable Finance Minister's budgetary allocation for one billion TT dollars for arrears and salary increases on that 4%. percent against the backdrop of his poor performance and performance and his lack of listening capabilities to the voices of the people, they are now calling for him and others like such to leave. However, when CNC3 News reached out to Batiste for comment, he did not appear to be fazed by this. Well, so that has been going around for quite a while. You know, he's, a, he's just a political creature. So he has been going around quite a while trying to make a name for himself because he's considering the next PSA election. I have gone with parts of the public service and where we have spoken, persons have been very much resolved that we are not to accept that at 4%. And that we had to continue pressing on to see if they could have a fair and equitable resolution. But he said a few workers against his leadership does not represent the thousand strong membership, but also stated that their concerns were duly noted. However, protesters said if Batiste refuses to act on their demands soon, they will be ramping up their actions. Kimri Fletcher, CNC3 News. As her staff threatens to withhold final exam papers, the principal of the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine campus, empathizes with them and their call for higher wages. Under the watchful eye of the police, members of the West Indies group of university teachers protested on campus today, calling for a higher remit. In April and after months of protests, members finally received a remit, but only 2% was put on the table. Within days, the offer was rejected, and now Wigot is once again promising to shut down operations at the campus. Addressing the members outside her office, Professor Rosemary Bell Antoine acknowledged that the university is facing dark days as its financial constraints has forced cutbacks, including sending home staff. However, the principal believes the workers' fight is justified. We have the worst salaries in the entire universe. We are aware of that. I am aware of that. Even the open campus has better salaries than us. And of course, if we are to compare ourselves to the private sector, well, I mean, there's no comparison with your qualifications. But as it stands, the university or the campus in of itself cannot afford to fund any increases or back pay. As much as I can say, we are down to bare bones at the point where our quality assurance is being impacted. Well, we got President Dr. Indira Rampasad says lecturers continue to teach but could not promise it will remain that way, especially if negotiations fail to move forward. We are going to continue to escalate. So far what we're doing is we're teaching, but we can also advise that that may also be in jeopardy and the exams which are coming up in December, because if exam papers are not submitted in November, then how can we have examinations? The principal urged Wigat members to be responsible in their actions as she remains optimistic about the outcome. Meanwhile, an official of the UE Marketing and Communications Department noted that police were not asked to watch over today's protest. The official said the officers were there as part of the TTPS mandate to maintain law and order during all protests. In fact, it was the campus principal who had asked them to leave. But still to come in the news, Chief Secretary demands the immediate reopening of Tobago's Registrar General's office as scores deny their lawful right to crucial documents. It's Breast Cancer Awareness. Tonight, one survivor calls for easier access to breast prosthesis. 
Coming up in sport, Soka Warriors head coach sees Nations League advancement as a source of inspiration to the national community. Let's continue to build with Bagwan Sings in Dan Steel. We are committed to providing quality products for all major building projects. Let's build together with rebars and beams, BRC coils and mats, RHS and angles, roofing sheets and purlins, lumber, plywood and MDF. Bagwan Sings in Dan Steel. Building homes, building communities, building TNT. Bagwan Sings in Dan Steel. Building value every day. Bumper traffic, I am here, and I'll definitely be late because I still have to pass by the ATM to get cash for you. So, see, no, 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 don't put you on that. You can pay with N cash, so just come straight here. Yeah. Ncash is a mobile wallet that gives users the convenience of making digital payments. You can use Ncash with any local debit card or credit card to pay anyone and or any business on Ncash no matter who they bank with. It's as easy as scan, pay, done. Download the app and create your wallet today. Welcome back. Police investigators are yet to take an official report from the 22-year-old suspect who is currently in police custody in connection with the shooting of prison officer Steve Phipps and the attempted assassination of Deputy Commissioner of Prisons, Showin Bruce. The incident, which took place on Wednesday morning, also saw Bruce's 12-year-old daughter wounded on her right leg. CNC3 News was told that she is recovering. The suspect, who was discharged from hospital yesterday morning, is said to be cooperating with investigators. The police commissioner, Ula Herwood Christopher, says Wednesday's seizure of guns may be linked to this shooting. An investigation into a suspected robbery and shooting involving an off-duty policeman has revealed information which contradicts the original story given. The officer reported that he was driving his car on 6th Avenue Barataria around 8.30 p.m. on Thursday when an armed bandit opened the back door of the car and announced a robbery. The officer claimed he fought the bandit while driving the car. According to the report given, the bandit ran out and shot at the police officer before escaping. Barataria police were called in and found eight spent shells and a quantity of marijuana in a nearby drain. A media release issued by the TTPS on Friday reported that further information was unearthed, which may contradict the report given by the officer. Officers of the Barataria CID are continuing inquiries. The anti-crime talks between the government and the opposition may take a little longer to kick off. The opposition is now confirming to CNC3 they have questions about the Prime Minister's proposals and plan to write him seeking clarification. Now it's unclear exactly what they plan to write to the PM saying, but some of the requests laid out by the Prime Minister include having the opposition send four parliamentarians while the government will send five ministers, excluding the Prime Minister. In the Prime Minister's response to the opposition, he proposed to discuss 12 pieces of legislation. The state has 21 days in which to file an appeal to the Privy Council. In the former Chief Magistrate Marcia A. sees a matter, Senior Counsel Ramesh Lawrence Maharaj, who led her winning legal team, said he didn't know if the state planned to appeal. He believes if the matter is appealed, though, the Privy Council would hear it as a matter of urgency with an expedited hearing. When contacted for comment yesterday, President of the Law Association, Lynette Sibaran Sweet, said they're still reading the judgments and declined to comment. However, Chief Magistrate Marcia A. Caesar scored a major victory after the Court of Appeal ruled that she had been coerced and forced out of office by the Judicial and Legal Service Commission headed by the Chief Justice. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley said he will intervene in an ongoing issue between the Registrar General's office in Tobago and its department in Trinidad. This comes after Chief Secretary Farley Augustine revealed that Tobagonians were frustrated over being unable to access services from the office. Augustine said an investigation launched by him revealed that the Tobago Registrar General office was locked out of the system after a disagreement between senior officials at the Tobago office and Trinidad Department. As a result, the process of birth and death certificates, land and company documents at the Registrar General's office in Tobago have been shut down. This is beyond unfortunate. We cannot hold an entire island to ransom uh, because um, of people's opinions or people in the feelings public servants just not doing what they ought to do. 
contacted for comment. Prime Minister Rowley told CNC3 News he is aware of the issue and he will be taking action to have the problem solved. Dr. Rowley, in lamenting the inconvenience caused to Tobagonians, explained that a legal problem has arisen which had to be examined and rectified. He said the matter is receiving the urgent attention of the Attorney General and may require the intervention of Cabinet. Dr. Rowley said he is on standby to have this done once the legal interventions are completed. This country's crime situation has led to the government has led the government to spend millions more to protect the national treasury. During today's sitting of the Standing Finance Committee, it was noticed that the allocation for the Treasury security increased from 2.7 million in 2023 to 7.8 million for fiscal 2024. Minister Kong Inwood said added security has now become necessary. We're now going to have 24-hour security because there are a lot of criminals around and the Treasury deals with cash. Treasury is the one that has to process large quantities of cash received at the district revenue offices, which then have to be transported to the central bank. So there has been some, I mean, you would have read about it in the papers, there have been issues of people misappropriating cash. The minister said a contract for the security services has been awarded recently, but he did not specify which company was hired. In tonight's Business Watch, NGC has signed a deal which should see a Titan return to operation in 2024. Meanwhile, TSET's progress is being seen as encouraging by the National Enterprises Limited. Peter Christopher tells us more. The National Gas Company of Trinidad and Tobago and Methanex Trinidad Limited have signed a new gas sales contract for the supply of gas to the Titan Methanol plant. The agreement with Metanex was signed on Thursday at the Hilton Trinidad and Conference Centre in St Anne's. The deal will allow for the resumption of operations at the World Scale Titan plant on the Point Lisa's industrial estate. The plant had been idle during the COVID-19 pandemic. Titan's methanol production capacity amounts to 875,000 metric tons per annum. NGC says the 2024 scheduled restart of the plant is welcome news for Trinidad and Tobago. Also on Thursday, NGC President Mark Loquan signed an agreement following the launch of Caribbean Sustain You, an online learning platform which will feature broad-based introductory level courses geared towards building awareness in sustainability and sustainable business practices. This is trying to get to the next side where cleaner energy is formed, where we're doing sustainable practices, where of course we're sustaining an industry in the meantime, still focus on gas and so on. Uh, but at the same time, we are trying to make a difference and build what you call an ecosystem. And we have always said we are trying to build an ecosystem that essentially brings everyone along. General Manager of National Enterprises Limited, Charles Maynard, says he is pleased by the progress being made by TSTT. The state's own telecommunications company is one of several state companies which fall under the umbrella of National Enterprises Limited. This means that TSTT is setting the benchmarks necessary, coming back to profitability. And in terms of when would we see that thing, I can't say. But I do know that we have our valuation process that we go through annually, and I do know that I'm encouraged by the progress and the benchmarks that I've seen TSTT here. Maynard was speaking at the launch of Nell's company website, which is expected to give shareholders a clearer idea concerning the performance of National Enterprises Limited. Standards Distributors Limited has launched the Hive Collection Furniture Line. In the launch on Thursday, Standards Managing Director Nicola Sabga says the line, which is highly customizable, has been developed with local designers in mind, as Standards wishes to give designers a platform to expose them to wider audiences, as well as grant them financial support to develop their work. And now for a look at today's energy and foreign exchange prices. Peter Christopher, CNC3 Business Watch.
The Samsara Nature Park in Pinal is losing its treasured birds, essential tools, equipment, and even animal feeds as thieves raid the premises almost every week. Since September, a staggering 97 hybrid chickens, including exotic breeds, have vanished, with the culprits resorting to dumping their feathered loot into feed bags before escaping. Radhika De Silva and Ivan Tulsi visited the park today to bring us more. Owner of Samsara Nature Park, Kerry Latchman, says the only animals being spared are the larger ones, like Muhavi, the camel. The, take, take, take all the chickens, all different breeds of hybrid chickens. We have over four or five different special breeds that lay blue eggs, that lay um, green eggs, that, that lay chocolate color brown eggs. These are young chickens that were recently imported. He says the thieves escaped through the forests and have evaded capture so far. You see, you will hear the rustle inside here. They came multiple nights, but they can't catch anybody. Anybody are too vast. The manpower is so limited for them. To go through the bush to look for these people is difficult. Latchman believes he knows who is behind the theft and hopes the public can help them to secure the animals. If anybody have galvanized line around, chain, chain link fence, anything like that, that will put up. It's 20 acres we have. So there's a lot and it, funds are limited. So whatever you, you all have that you all are not using, I'm not saying to go and buy it, but I saw a lot of people have galvanized put down on the side or old shed or something that they are not using. We will greatly appreciate it. Cassandra Passad says the situation is distressing. For the past two weeks, we're not sleeping, or we're sleeping barely, three, four hours max. And the principal of Bubbly's preschool in Aruka, who came on a tour at the park, also urged the public to help the park owners. There are the present crime rate that we do have in Trinidad. I will, you know, recommend anybody to come here, especially with the with families. When families come here, they can enjoy themselves. But also, I'm pleading with people outside there, on whatever simple way that you can contribute to help them to secure the premises of Samsara Nature Park, it will be much appreciated. Anyone wanting to assist or contribute towards purchasing lights, cameras or barbed wire for the park can call Latchman at 380-0791. Radhika De Silva, CNC3 News. Thanks a lot for that story there, Radhika. Okay, we're going to take a break now, but before we do, let's check in with Clay Hussein, who has tonight's weather. Mostly hot and sunny skies turn partly cloudy with isolated showers developing really along western coastal areas during the afternoon with even an isolated thunderstorm moving out into the Gulf of Paria. So a very brief heavy rainfall in central parts of Trinidad, even northwestern areas as well, picking up some scattered showers there. And as we progress through the evening, mostly settled conditions, we still have quite a bit of dry air in place. But as we progress through the next week, we will be seeing more moist air move in. But lots to talk about in tonight's weather the forecast with two alerts still in effect and an eclipse happening tomorrow. The details after the break. You're serious about growing your business. So are we. It's your time to get real growth. We will show you how. Scale up Trinidad and Tobago, a proven business building platform. Learn global strategies that deliver proven results delivered by world-class facilitators. It's your time to thrive. Space is limited, so apply now. Find out more at scaleuptd.com. Scale up Trinidad and Tobago. Get real growth. So I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL, strong heart, probiotics, um, turmeric, I can say. I use this product and it works for me. A high premium on quality prices and service. The main attributes of Southern Food Basket Marketplace Point Fortin. A universe of variety with something for every shopper. Come to where the deals are bigger and better, where you shop in comfort. Southern Food Basket Marketplace, now serving with pride, Point Fortin and environs.
Companions, bad barbers. Some things are better left to the professionals. Coming up on Caribbean Passport, food and rum cravings acting up? Well, it's that time of year in Barbados. Over 1,000 runners on the streets of Port of Spain. It's the newest road race challenge. Anna's premiere. It's all next on Caribbean Passport, CNC3, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. What should your parents use to fight inflammation? Omega XO. Omega XO. Tell me, boy, where do you think I should take, babe? My mommy and daddy should use Omega XL to fight inflammation. <laughs> The Ultimate Cricket Showdown has returned. The CG United Super 50 Cup is back in Trinidad. From October 17th to November 11th at the Brian Lara Cricket Academy. Wingsback Oval and UB Spec. Come out and support your team. Visit windyscricket.com for more info. Welcome back. Driven by her own experience, one breast cancer survivor has been on a mission to raise awareness about the availability of breast prosthesis. Mel Gabriel is now not only hoping to empower survivors, but also help them overcome the challenges linked to the loss of a breast. She shared her story with Jesse Ramdale. Mel Gabriel is breaking barriers and bearing it all to a society that often places emphasis on physical appearance. Two years ago, her battle with breast cancer took her under the knife and over into uncharted waters. And I remember seeing my sister at the foot of my bed and I started to cry because it was like, okay, we did it, you know, next step. And she's like, what are you crying for? Like, you've been so strong all this time. I'm like, Gil, what? <laughs> this is real, you know? That reality of a double mastectomy rattling her to the core. It still at times feels out of body for me because I... I feel like I'm literally just watching myself experience breast cancer and experience survivorship and experience chemotherapy and all the things. So it's hard to explain. In embracing her journey, she also discovered the power of prosthesis. Uh, if you care what you look like with breasts, it, it reminds you of what you used to be like. It's a little bit of a confidence booster although I don't need help with self-esteem, but it's a boost because having gone through this major life event, it does something to, to your mental, it does something to your psyche, and it challenges the, the very idea of womanhood and femininity for women. What Gabriel also discovered was the challenges women faced in accessing the transformative impact. It's why she has embarked on a mission to source and obtain prosthesis for women, hoping to restore symmetry and balance to their own bodies. And for the 39-year-old, her mother's own battle with the disease has also armed her with the tools to navigate her post-mastectomy advocacy works. You know, my mother's maiden name is Guerrero. So Guerrero actually means warrior in Spanish. So it kind of... Everything lined up in a way where, all right, there's no way you can actually pop down now and say you're not going to make it. Like, you have to fight. There's no other way. Gabriel is hoping to collaborate with medical professionals and organizations to ensure prosthesis are accessible and affordable for breast cancer survivors. Jesse Ramdeo, CNC3 News. As disasters increase in frequency, 
The Disaster Management Unit of the Penal Debe Regional Corporation has embarked on a sensitization drive to get citizens prepared for natural disasters. The event was held to commemorate World Disaster Risk Reduction Day, celebrated on October 13th every year. Speaking to CNC3 News outside their booth at the Penal Market, the coordinator of the Disaster Management Unit of the Regional Corporation, Videsh Lal, admitted that some people are still reluctant to leave their homes and belongings when disasters hit. He says the sensitization program aims to educate people about disasters. We are trained 25 percent within the region to be able to assist us to operate the dinghies in, in flood episodes. As you might be aware, the corporation, we are one of the corporations that has dinghies. We have, so we use the dinghies to operate and to rescue persons who will be trapped in flood situations. He says the corporation has submersible pumps, lighting, safety vests, and sandbags for the public when disasters strike, noting there is full support from the chairman and the council of the corporation, as well as the ODPM. Okay, so Colleen joins us now. We understand that it is still hurricane season. Yeah, we have Tropical Storm Sean, barely hanging on, mind you. We have another system that is developing that could take aim at the Caribbean region next week by the end of next week. So let's go take a look what's going on in the Atlantic right now. We have Invest 94L. That's the one that we're concerned about, this active tropical wave now moving into frame, moving towards the Caribbean region, the National Hurricane Center, giving it a medium chance of development over the next 48 hours and a high chance of development over the next seven days. By midweek next week, that's when conditions across the Atlantic is for forecast to become quite favorable for formation and we could see tropical depression or tropical storm form and if it does form, it will be called Tammy. Meanwhile, we have tropical storm Sean barely hanging on as a tropical storm as strong wind shear, keeping a lot of the showers and thunderstorms to its east and it's forecast to remain out at sea over the next several days. For Trinidad and Tobago through this weekend, generally dry air but light winds across our area and that will lead to some pop-up isolated afternoon showers favoring western and hilly parts of the country but as we progress through next week we have lots of moisture that will be moving in from the southeast and east that will be influencing our weather leading to more cloudy skies and isolated showers and thunderstorms so that's why we have that uh, hot spell alert that's uh, ending next week but for tonight and through tomorrow generally settled conditions on minimum lows between 25 and 27 degrees looking out for an odd shower favoring Tobago and eastern Trinidad but that hot spell alert like I mentioned it ends on Monday at 4 p.m. finally for Trinidad and Tobago as we gradually get cooler temperatures this yellow level alert still in effect for hot temperatures through the next couple of days where maximum highs could get up to 34 degrees in Trinidad 33 in Tobago with the feels like index anywhere from 34 to 44 degrees, warmer across western parts of Trinidad, especially during the hottest times of the day between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. So continue wearing loose fitting and light colored clothes, especially if you're outdoors. Avoid strenuous outdoor activity between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Avoid direct sunlight during this time of day as well as there's a high chance of sunburn, open doors and windows that are not in direct sunlight for ventilation and know the signs and symptoms of heat exhaustion. Now looking at the forecast for us tomorrow, starting off sunny but by the late morning through the afternoon and this period is going to be quite critical as well for you to see that eclipse and more on that in a little bit but we'll start seeing mostly cloudy conditions with isolated showers favoring western and hilly parts of both islands during the late morning through afternoon period with the maximum high is quite hot up to 34 degrees celsius and we also have another alert still in effect this is the hat of the seas alert extended through saturday so 10 a.m is actually ending around 10 to noon tomorrow um, for Trinidad and Tobago's northern coast and we are expecting still large breaking waves with long period swells and choppy conditions in sheltered areas so continue exercising caution for all marine interests as we head through this weekend because even though this alert will end as the swell subsides we will still be dealing with spring tides that continue into next week with waves slight to moderate in open waters up to 1.5 meters in sheltered areas near one meter but occasionally choppy so taking a look at the extended weather forecast well mostly hot and sunny through the weekend that hot spell alert ends on monday 
but come next week we will be seeing some cooler temperatures we also have this eclipse that is going on this weekend uh, it starts tomorrow that's where the moon is actually going to be blocking some of the sun rays and it's going to be looking like if the moon took a bite out of the sun the path of totality moves across north america central america and south america but for trinidad and tobago will begin at around 1 12 tomorrow afternoon and continue into the late afternoon with the maximum eclipse across southwestern areas of around 2 51 p.m and it ends around 4 17 p.m don't look at the sun directly with your eyes use our welders glasses your sunglasses may not be able to cut it also look at the shadow of the sun on the ground that will be the safest play with this eclipse so lots going on this weekend alerts showers and uh eclipse, eclipse. It's quite, quite, a, quite a bunch of excitement happening. Yeah. All right, thank you so much, Colleen. Well, that study was still to come in the news. So we thought, again, when you're thinking about the culture, the history, and things like that, you want to share that with tourists. In tonight's travel segment, we tell you how Curacao transformed a dangerous town into a tourist destination. Up a new guy. Remember this face. I'll shoot it by accident. <laughs> Terrorists have taken possession of nuclear missiles. If these babies go off, it'll be World War III. Good to be back. That's me. Come on, if I do. Brilliant. Is that the biggest one you've got? Oh, it's way bigger than that. Expendable. Hurry, last few days at Movie Town Cinemas, South Park 10, Caribbean Cinemas, Trin City, Gemstone Cinemas, and Cine Central, Rice Plaza, Shawarnas. The experts at Jameson are here for your health and wellness. Our essentials lineup has products that support immune function, gut health, heart health, and the maintenance of good health. Jameson is here for your health. Coming up on Caribbean Passport, food and rum cravings acting up? Well, it's that time of year in Barbados. Over 1,000 runners on the streets of Port of Spain. It's the newest road race challenge. A Pan As premiere. It's all next on Caribbean Passport, CNC3, Sunday at 7.30 p.m. Food Baskets Arima, Chamflay and Shagwanas. Shop and save big this month end with Food Basket Family Deals. 5 pound minced beef, $99. 10 kg flour, $74.95. 8 kg rice, $69.95. Big deal, 4 litre oil, $69.95. Food Basket is all about the family and great deals. 2 bale toilet paper, $89.95. 8 pound turkey drumstick, $99. 11 pound Tyson leg quarter, $79.95. Food Basket Tarima, Chamflay, and Shabonas. What should your parents use to fight inflammation? Omega XL. Oh, you tell me, boy. What do you think I should take, babe? My mommy and daddy should use Omega XL to fight inflammation. <laughs> One good thing has led to another. Make your taste buds go boom with Devon Digestive Bites. An explosion of great taste. Digestive bites make your taste buds go boom. Sleep peacefully on your period with Always Night that gives you three times protection. It absorbs your flow, has an anti-leakage system, and has a perfect fit for your body. Meet the Always Night products for a three times night protection. Plumbing problems? Don't guess. Call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Proud to be serving Trinidad and Tobago for over 20 years. We do it all. Maintenance and repairs, new construction, sewer lines, inspection, drain cleaning, leak detection. We are licensed and insured. So call Plumbing Solutions at 628-4646. Yesterday, the Housing Development Corporation was forced to cease its eviction of over 20 families at its Taradale development. The corporation explained that it's owed hundreds of thousands of dollars. Today, we asked people whether they agree with the eviction of delinquent tenants. Yes, I do. Because it have people who are willing to pay the rent and willing to get a place to live in. 
like myself. I think they should give them notice first, you know, and not just evict them just like that. I believe it's like too much of freeness, people like I being real and anyway your boys only Trinidadian like freeness. I wouldn't say that is the right thing to do by throwing somebody out of their place. But in a general form, if they do set an example, it could continue. Your rent is five hundred dollars or whatever the case, or even fifteen hundred. It's much cheaper than regular rent is like thirty five hundred dollars out there for a regular two bedroom and you're still I don't want to say refusing but there are channels, if you can't make your payments, you go and do what you had to do. If you're not seeking your own interest, then that's how you problem. It's not just some people do the delinquents without missing a few payments. It's a couple years' payments they're missing, and that's ridiculousness. All right, this is where we hand you over now to Jassy Marie, who's standing by with sport. Jassy? Thank you so much, Ria. After the break, we have some cricket news. New Zealand stays perfect at the ICC World Cup doing the business against Bangladesh. And it's also time to set your calendars and alarms as another packed weekend of sporting entertainment is coming your way. Stick around, sport is next. Nature's Ways Alive Kids Gummies are multivitamin gummies meant to support the development of children's bodies like their bones, muscles, joints, brain, heart, and also their immune health. Choose Alive Kids Gummies by Nature's Way because they deserve it. At CVRS and the Trinidad Eye Hospital, we take care of all your family's eye care needs. Get comprehensive eye exams for the entire family and then get referred to our in-house ophthalmologist if needed. We have a wide variety of sunglasses and frames for adults and children, and you can even get contact lenses too. Call us at 620-1025 today. Food baskets Arima, Chamflair and Chaguanas, where $10 is king. Yes, you heard right, your $10 is king. Three packs coconut milk, $10. Three bottles vinegar, $10. Three 237 ml Coca-Cola, $10. Three 225 gram baking powder, $10. Six chubby for $10 and much more. Take advantage of 10 is king at Food Basket Arima, Chamflair and Chaguanas, where shopping is a pleasure and the price is right. I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL from heart, probiotics, um, the turmeric. I can say I use this product and it works for me. Go from ah. to ah. from ow. Relieve joint pain with Jameson's Glucosamine Chondroitin. Ah. Struck on inside edge. It was a horrible delivery. It was Introducing the Inside Edge, a brand new cricket show about to swing your way. Beautifully bold. Guardian Media Limited's Chassie Marique and former TNT cricketer Andre Lawrence turn their arms over at some of the biggest names in the sport and take on the biggest topics of the day. Loading. Every Monday night from 8.30 p.m., catch the Inside Edge, only on CNC3. Welcome back, it's time for sport now. Swimmer Dylan Carter earned bronze in the 50 meter freestyle at the second leg of the World Aquatics Swimming World Cup today. Carter was placed in lane five for the final after topping his preliminary heat earlier in the competition. He swam a time of 22.25 seconds to finish as the second fastest in the round across all nine heats. That was behind American Michael Andrew. In the final, Andrew again got the better of Carter and so did Australia's Isaac Cooper. Here's that race. Is Dylan Carter going to get the better of the American? The event where it really does matter, your reaction time the most is the 50 freestyle for men. Reaction time, the best from Kenzo Simmons up in lane two for the Netherlands, along with Nicholas Lear of Norway. Don't expect them to be in the top three at the end. Expect Andrew and Carter. There's a world record. No worries about that being got close to. Michael Andrew Howe is going to win it in lane four. And second, it is the man who only made it through in a swim off this morning. Isaac Cooper very nearly wasn't in this final at all. Gets through by virtue of a swim off earlier today, and he gets second place. 
There goes Dylan Carter. This bronze medal adds to the silver medal which Carter won in the 50-meter butterfly and a bronze medal in the 100-meter freestyle in the first leg in Berlin, Germany last week. Trinidad and Tobago Cycling Federation President Rowena Williams says all is set with the Trinidad and Tobago cyclists at the Caribbean World Cycling Road rather, Cycling Championships in Guadeloupe. Trinidad and Tobago will be represented by under-23 cyclists Liam Trepti, Maurice Burnett, Rundle Woods, Enrique de Comomond, and Benjamin Mute. The campaign begins on Saturday, and Williams, who is acting as team manager, says the riders are ready to go. The guys are ready. They're excited. They have met most of their other country colleagues, and, um, you know, they have been doing their workouts, rides, group rides with the other teams, and they feel very comfortable. And I think, you know, it, it, they, they're in a frame of mind that they're ready to, to really show what they have and to make Trinidad and Tobago proud. Now, national road and time trial champion Alexi Costa Ramirez has taken the sport by storm. A member of the Miami Blazers pro team, she took the Division II women's title at cycling on the Avenue 9 last week. The current holder of Pan Am silver and bronze believes that Trinidad and Tobago will do well to plan ahead for future success. I think it's pretty important to me because, I mean, after me and Tanil, there's a kind of gap for elite Right now, there, there there's a couple of juniors, but then there's no one in between. So it, it is kind of important that we, we try to start to get more girls in because then there's going to be a point in time where they may not have any, any females representing the country. And I think it's super important to have the representation at these big events. You can read more about Alexi's journey in the sport of cycling in this week's Sunday Guardian. The Combined Colleges and Campuses today announced its list of 14 players to compete in the Regional Super 50 Cup beginning on Tuesday. Former Trinidad and Tobago youth and West Indies under-19 player Kristen Kalicharan will once again suit up with the students. Current, t current TNT youth player Shachugan Rambaran is also in this squad. They will both be looking forward to upsetting the home crowd and the home team when the CCC meets Trinidad and Tobago Red Force in the opening game of this tournament on Tuesday at the Queen's Park Oval, bowling off from 9 a.m. Football now, according to head coach Angus Eve, Trinidad and Tobago heads into tonight's CONCACAF Nations League Group A match against Guatemala, fully focused and full of vibes. The senior men's head coach shared his thoughts on his team, the opposition and Trinidad and Tobago football overall ahead of the match, which both teams consider a final. The senior men's national team took a moment from pre-game prep ahead of TNT versus Guatemala to engage with the young members of Anthony Dada Wickham's Trendsetter Hawks Academy. Eve says his team remains committed to using the power of sport to inspire the national community, which is why they're determined to stick around in League A. We see it as a game that um, we need to win or not lose um, so that we can first probably maintain our position, as I said, in, in the A. And then um, the possibility of us going on to the quarterfinals with a win is very real. So the guys understand the expectations. The games that have gone has gone already. TNT eked out a 1-0 win in a pre-Gold Cup friendly against the Central Americans in July. Since then, they have, they have gained some other players that has come into the squad, good quality players. I think they're well coached, very organized team. Trinidad and Tobago and Guatemala have played 25 times. The Soka Warriors have won nine, but more importantly, are in a nine-match unbeaten streak in the fixture, dating back to September 2005. Eve says he's had no issue motivating his current crop, adding that the TNT rebuild is a process that has required real graft. We um, have not been producing top-class players, meaning that our players have not been playing at a high level for a very long time. Um, so we have to use the resources that we have, we have to use the players that we have that, and we believe in them and we play in a particular style to get the results and hence the reason why we're even talking about us having six points today. Kickoff is at 9 p.m. this evening. Joe Van Ravello, CNC3 Sport. Yeah, head on out as soon as the CNC3 news is over and support the Soko Warriors. Now the wide world of sport will come into focus in tonight's international roundup. 
After seven months on the sidelines, New Zealand captain Kane Williamson was back with a bang as the Kiwis beat Bangladesh by eight wickets at the ICC Cricket World Cup today. Batting first, Bangladesh reached 245 for nine. Mushfakur Rahim hit 66 in the middle of the order to lead his team scorers. In reply, Williamson and Daryl Mitchell combined to take the Kiwis within touching distance. Mitchell saw them to their target unbeaten on 89 after Williamson retired hurt on 78. From the pitch to the track, Nigerian sprinter Divine Oduduru has received a six-year competitive ban for committing two doping violations. The Athletics Integrity Unit announced the decision on Thursday, saying there was overwhelming evidence against the former World Junior Silver medalist. In golf, Lexi Thompson says she played decent on a PGA Tour debut as she finished one over par after 16 holes at the Shriners Children's Open. Thompson is only the seventh woman to compete in a PGA Tour event and the first since 2018. She sits joint 76 on the leaderboard. Jovan Ravello, CNC3 Sport. All right, now what a great weekend it is to be a sport fan. And if you're wondering what there is to do, here's what's coming up. The hunt for points in the SSFL resumes with round 10 on Saturday. Malik heads south to meet Pleasantville at the Manny Ramjan Stadium's training field. And on the main field, presentation San Fernando tackles Trinity East. Shogonos North welcomes St. Benedict's College, while another South team, Naparima College, also heads north to face San Juan. QRC will host East Mukurapo, and just down the road, CIC will face Speyside. Fatima College entertains Arima North, and St. Anthony's crosses the waters to meet Bishop's Tobago. Also in Tobago, their schoolboy football is long behind them, but over 40 and over 50 ballers from Trinidad and Tobago and the region roll back the years at the Tobago Masters Tournament at the Dwight York Stadium. Chinese Bicentennial's traditional Dragon Boat Festival takes place at the Shagaramas Boardwalk on Saturday and Sunday from 8 a.m. on both days. Or you can check out Rugby's knockout semi-finals on Saturday at the Queen's Park Savannah. Simultaneously from 4 p.m., Caribs will take on Royalians and Harvard meets Northern. Further afield, Dylan Carter swims the 50-meter backstroke and the 100-meter freestyle on Saturday, then the 50-meter butterfly on Sunday on leg two of the Swimming World Cup in Greece. TNT's elite road cyclists are on the medal hunt at the Caribbean Championships in Guadeloupe all weekend long. And last but certainly not least, the Soka Warriors aim to sew up a place in the next round of CONCACAF's Nations League, if not by tonight against Guatemala, by Sunday away to Curaçao. Quite a lot indeed, but now it's time to end on a high. Sport High, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. In the dregs of their Conmebol qualifier against the five-time champions, Lavino Tinto turned into prime Brazil themselves. Well-built and que golasso, Eduard Belo earned Venezuela a share of the points and takes home tonight's CNC3 Sport High. Sport High, brought to you by Supplegen. Boost you up. Yeah, La Bicicleta, I believe it's called in Spanish. That's it for sport, though. We'll be back with more after these. Imagine a much-needed rest, sun, and sand. Let Supplegen make it happen. Win an all-inclusive trip for two to beautiful Montego Bay, Jamaica. Spend $25 or more in Supplegen products, write your name and contact at the back of your bill, and place it in the entry form box. Enter online via WooBox.com. Other prizes include over $6,000 in grocery vouchers. Promotion runs up to a first to November 30th and is an LCD approved. Supplegen boost you up. So I always try to make sure I have a, a one or two extra bottle of Omega XL. Strong heart, probiotics, um, the turmeric. I can say I use this product and it works for me. Colgate Total gives you a superior antibacterial protection for whole mouth health. It helps stop problems before they start. So your dentist ready. Mr. Walker. Oh, am I early? Be dentist ready with Colgate Total. Try the new, darker, more delicious Rodeo with chocolate and vanilla cream. You'll say. Rodeo, oh, 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 oh. That delicious creamy Devon. Mmm. Rodeo. Devon smiles in every bite.
Are you feeling puffy, lifeless, cranky, and dull? Use Nutrisec, a unique internationally acclaimed formula that detoxifies, regenerates, and cleanses the liver. Your liver is a major fat burning organ, the filter and cleanser of the blood. Protect it. Nutrisec, the only non herbal liver tonic that is excellent for diabetics, alcohol detox, and cholesterol reduction. Revitalize your liver today. Get it now at leading pharmacies nationwide. At CVRS and the Trinidad Eye Hospital, we take care of all your family's eye care needs. Get comprehensive eye exams for the entire family and then get referred to our in-house ophthalmologists if needed. We have a wide variety of sunglasses and frames for adults and children and you can even get contact lenses too. Call us at 620-1025 today. Welcome back. Over 20,000 locals and visitors flocked to the city of Otra Banda in Curaçao for the 5th Kaya Kaya Festival in September. Among them are reporter Andrea perez Sobas, who tells us more about how the festival began in tonight's This Week in Travel. CNC3 was in Curaçao for a few days in September, where we had a chance to experience the fifth edition of Kaya Kaya Festival. This festival was aimed at helping a community that was once considered dangerous. So come with me as we immerse ourselves into the culture of Curaçao. Caribbean Airlines, in collaboration with the Curacao Tourist Board, invited journalists and media influencers from September 1st to the 5th to experience the much talk about Kaya Kaya Festival. From as early as 4 p.m., the crowd started to gather at Otrobanda for the festival. Otrobanda is one of the historically important quarters of Willemstad, the capital of Curacao. As the night progressed, many people gathered to participate in the music, food, and art. Kurt Schupp, one of the organizers, told the media the area was transformed from one deemed dangerous for visitors into one of the many popular tourist spots. The moment we told the neighbors that we, we, we are organizing a party in the street, they started painting the houses, cleaning the spaces, and said, so, wow, this, is, this, is, this has like an impact um, when people are coming to the neighborhood. And first we thought, oh, maybe 1,000 people will come. The first time came like 3,000 people. And then we kept doing it like uh, a bigger piece and a bigger piece. This edition is the biggest ever. Shoop said the main goal is to keep building the community and using the festival as a tool for engaging residents by encouraging young people to take care of their home and surroundings. We're using it as a tool to um, um, engage the community, um, to create projects for the youth, to clean the area, to also, um, by doing all those things, we have seen that the tourists also come to the neighborhood. It used to be a neighborhood that was not uh, you know, very welcoming to the people um, from, ab from abroad. I think that nowadays you see a lot of tours. Regional manager for the Caribbean of the Curacao Tourist Board, Elaine Hart Francisca, who also participated in the event, said the Tourism Board embraced Kaya Kaya Festival in the last two to three years as it was dedicated to the community of Otrobanda. But we thought, again, when you're thinking about the culture, the history and things like that, you want to share that with tourists. So we thought, okay, what can we do that makes it more attractive to those people outside to fly in for this? So we worked together with travel agencies and all the markets sent this out. So people that are traveling to Curacao know that this event happens and also people that are planning to travel that know that, hey, there's a super big art festival here in Curacao. CNC3 spoke to a couple of people to get their thoughts on the festival. It's really fun. That will be my third time. Um, the loud music, there are foods, drinks, everything. I love the music. Different kind of music for everyone, what they like. The Spanish music by the various live bands kept people enthralled until Monday at 4 a.m. Andrea Perez Sobas, CNC3 News. All right, and that story brings us to the end of the 7 p.m. news here on CNC3. Thanks for watching. I'm Ria Rambali. I'm Kijan Haynes. I am Jassi Marik. And I'm Kalein Hussain. Have a great weekend.
Happy 18th anniversary CNC3 as we continue to cover your world 